that your job is changing whether you work internally or externally because of curation. And I'm hoping at the end of this hour that you will agree with me that this is a skill that you need to really start thinking about, perhaps even start integrating into what you're doing in your work. And I know you're all at different organizations, internal, external, some of you both. So we're all in a little bit different place, but we're all communicators. So, you know, there's been a few times in the last decade or so where we as communicators had to take sort of a leap of faith, right? Well, I guess I better check out this social media stuff, and that seems to have paid off for a lot of us, right? So here's another one of those times where I want you to start thinking about this topic of curation. And for the, those of us who are new to the topic, this is a quick definition, and as I mentioned earlier in relation to the museum, it's finding, selecting, organizing, and sharing the best of relevant content. And all this stuff is in the handouts, by the way. So. Some of these words are very important, it, and we're going to talk about how to find, select, and organize, but what's key to me is the best of relevant content. I'm passionate about the topic of podcasting, but there's no way I'm going to grab every mention of the word podcasting in the universe and share it with all of you and say, this is great stuff. I don't know if it's great stuff, I haven't even read it. So there's that contextual step that has to happen, and the idea that you really need to select what's best out there with people. So, you know, Fast Company Magazine is, is pretty well known, and it was two years ago or so where they said content curation is going to be huge, and it, it, that's sort of around the time when it got on my radar screen, and you know when you start to be interested in something, then all of a sudden you see it everywhere. And I know in the last year and a half, it seems to be popping up in lots of places. And in fact, this is a survey by Curata, which granted is a company in the industry, but they asked people, do they ever share content from blogs, publications, et cetera, with other people. And I bet if we surveyed this group, this would be a pretty similar finding at least every week. How many people at least every week say, pass something along to someone and say, this is interesting, you should check this out? Daily? Depends how busy you are, right? Never, well, I don't know about that guy. He's in his cubicle and he's not paying attention to anybody. So kind of interesting. And you know, why is it that curation has become such a hot topic? Does anyone remember 1999? How many of you were in the working world then? <laughs> Do you remember Alta Vista, the most powerful and useful guide to the net? Remember we used to call it the net? So this is what that looked like in 99, right? So if I were to do a search in those days, we didn't have a Google search then, we just did a search on the net, but we came up with some information, right? So it was pretty easy to manage. Well, I don't have to tell you that nowadays, we have this information, this, this phrase known as the information fire hose. And it's, it actually, to me, sometimes feels like a fire hose where it's just coming at me and there's so much and I can't drink it because it's just coming at me so much. So this part of what we're going to talk about today is using curation to help us deal with the fire hose. I have so many things in my Google Reader. If you were at Joe Thornley's excellent session just before this one, he talked, he made a very impassioned plea to use things like RSS readers to help you organize information. I'm also a big fan of that. But every day, you see my communications feed, there were 942 items in there on that particular day. I'm dealing with email for personal things, for business things, you, same as you. I'm dealing with Twitter. I love TweetDeck and Hootsuite, but again, it's more information coming at me. I've been using Google Plus for a while. Again, another source of information, sometimes great stuff, but I have to go through it. I also read a print newspaper. Maybe it dates me, I don't know, but every six days a week on my front porch is the Globe and Mail. And until they shut down that printing plant, I'll probably have that thing delivered. But I also read a lot of news online, as I suspect you all do as well. So how do you organize all this? I just mentioned all these sources of great information, most of it great, not all of it great. How do you organize it? I'm embarrassed to show you this picture. These are my browser bookmarks. Please don't let this leave this room because it's very embarrassing. We have stuff like bed and breakfast, wineries, royalty-free music, CEOs who use Twitter for Business Week. That's probably like three years old, right? So this is not the way to organize information. If I need to find something, about the only thing I would use on here would be to get to my bank to see if my $3 is still there. So, Using browser bookmarks, you know, might have worked in the Alta Vista days, but nowadays, forget it. Yeah, and I know you can do folders and all that stuff, but obviously, I don't do that because my stuff looks like this. So I'm saying this is not what you want to do. 
But at the same time, I love this quote from Clay Shirky who tells us that it's not information overload, so we can't really blame the fire hose, it's filter failure. So if I can't get through all that stuff, it's because I'm not filtering it properly. And that's part of the things we're going to talk about today. And I hope this will be a practical session for you that you, you will go away with. Uh, Joe, I don't want to steal your line, but you had a great one about, you know, if one thing's two things, or if you get three things, it'll be a whole lot. I just did steal this line, and it's right here. So it's filter failure, and that's Clay Shirky of New York University. So am I making a case yet? Are you starting to think that maybe you should care about curation? I think it can help you as individual communicators to keep up with information. It might even position you within your organization, within your industry as a thought leader. If you're an independent practitioner, that's really important too. And it might help you to help your organization differentiate itself. And later I'm going to show you some, I think, really good examples of how organizations are using curation in this way. Now, I need to mention the concept of content marketing. Does everyone know what content marketing is? I'm going to define it, okay. Content marketing is, uh, simply stated, publishing interesting information to your audience. So I'm gonna pick on someone. They're gonna look away. What, what industry are you in? Uh, retirement. Retirement, perfect. So you're dealing with an external audience. Yes. Okay, so as a person, of course I'm way too young to be thinking about retirement, but if I were, you know, like in my 50s or something, um, <laughs> or maybe even older, what kinds of information do you think I would find of interest as a, re as a person thinking about retirement? And I know we should start thinking when we're younger, I get myself. What kind of information? Financial planning, retirement planning. Financial planning, retirement planning, maybe ways to spend my money, where are good places to live. Now, if an organization, thank you for that, that was perfect. It wasn't even a plan. Um, if an organization were to publish interesting information and I'm in that target audience, I might follow that information. I might want to read it and subscribe to their newsletter or whatever. Some of that information would be original content that you would create, right? But I'm going to suggest that you'd also curate content from others and add it to that mix. So think about it. If you are in charge, and I know you're not right now, but you might be someday in charge of the content marketing effort, and I have to be clear, we're not talking about marketing material to promote your company. That's different. We still need that stuff, right? We need the brochures, we need the website and all that jazz. But the content marketing is beyond that. It's interesting stuff that I as a consumer would want to go see. It's not being forced on me, it's something I really want. So if you can combine the content marketing with the curation, that's going to help you because it's a lot of work to create all the original content. So if you combine it with the curation, it can make it more powerful. Plus, it's not just you talking, right? You're saying, I have gone out and found other sources of information to complement that. So content marketing, content curation working together. So again, as communicators, I think curation can help you to do your job better. And as an individual, you've got that thought leadership, you can add the curated stuff to the original stuff. And I don't know about you, and it's been a long time since I've worked in an organization with a paycheck as opposed to being an independent. But in either case, as an independent and as an employee, I like being the person that people would go to for stuff, right? You don't want to be the person, don't ask Joe, he, he's, you know, I don't even know why he's here. You want to be the person that go, you check with Diane, she knows how to do that event stuff. Call Diana Deegan. You want to be that person whose name comes up. And within your organization, I think you're more likely to be that person if you're clued in to curation. So as part of your career, I hope you'll agree with me that curation is, is something that's important to know. But at the same time, those of us who do external communications really need to start thinking about curation because I do a lot of work, for example, with business to business, right? So my clients are usually, not always, companies that are selling expensive big products and services. These are not impulse purchases. This is not buying the can of pop at the, at the cash register. This is a multi-million dollar project purchase that they have to make. So it's a long buying cycle. So if my clients can keep in front of their potential audience with original content and curated content, they might stand a better chance than the other company who they haven't heard from in a year and they sort of forgot about them. So important for brands. And again, it's that trusted guide. Now we're gonna get into the idea of how to do this. If anyone agree with me, the curation, okay, it's something I need to know about. Well, how do you do it, Donna? Here's how you do it. 
the first part, and this relates quite nicely to Joe's session. How many were at Joe Thorn Thornley's session? Okay, perfect. They should have been put together in the book there, you know. The first idea is to actually find the content, right, beyond just reading the newspaper and uh, sort of being out in the world. You have to actively find the content. And I really do like to automate that in some way, right? And that's where you have your RSS feeds. You want to search for certain terms, industry terms, people's names. You want to search, you want to use your, uh, I have a Google Reader set up for alerts. I also sometimes will use email alerts. I know my clients seem to prefer an email alert rather than RSS, a lot of them. I don't know why. Uh, I'll set those up. I will have Twitter searches. You all know that you can set up a search, a persistent search in Twitter. Like I have a column right now for IABC 12. See what's going on at the conference. In Google Plus, you can also save a search. So these are all places where you can start to, say, to uh, automate the discovery of information because it all starts with finding, right? You've got to find it first. And also, if you know that there are people in your industry whether you're in healthcare, mining, education, whatever it is, you want to follow what they're saying. You want to be reading those blogs. So now that you are having this information come to you, you're going to need to pick one or more tools to use for curation. I'm not going to explain delicious right now. I just want to say that it has changed my life. Anyone use delicious? Okay, we should start a club. Uh, I'm going to tell you in a few minutes what it's all about. But the idea is that you need to pick some kind of a tool, otherwise you've just got all this stuff coming in. And I think it's very important as a curator to own a, a niche, right? Suppose you said, okay, Donna, I, I think this curation stuff is really cool. I'm going to start on Monday. I'm going to curate information on, oh, I don't know, communications. Would that be a good idea? It's a little odd. It's a little odd. So you want something, whether it's, as I mentioned, your industry or some special need. And I bet if I were to ask each one of you in your industry, you would point to someone who has succeeded in, maybe not curating yet, but in publishing information that is, wow, got to read this, can't miss it. Right? We all know someone like that. So think about if you want to be a curator, is there a niche area that you might not necessarily own, but you would be able to sort of take a piece of it and have some leadership there? When you're creating content or publishing content, only about 30% of it should be branded. So it comes from Trafalgar Communications or it comes from XYZ company, XYZ company. 70% should be curated. And Todd suggests that because 70% of the world is more interesting than you. Share your content consistently and also make it very easy for other people to share so that they don't have to go to the trouble going up to that browser bar and copying the URL because it's just so difficult. Uh, you need to always link back to the original source when you curate content. Otherwise, you are not a curator, you are a plagiarist, exactly. And we don't want to be a plagiarist. A machine can aggregate. I can set up a program. I can get someone to write some code that'll go out there. You've seen these content farms. They go out there and they just grab stuff and they just publish it on a web page. That is is the raw, rawest form of aggregation. That's not what we're going to do. Only a human being can curate. Only a human being can go and say, this is really good. I'm going to add some context to it and republish it. This, sort of interesting, but when I republish it, I'm going to add that I think the author should have said this or this, right? So is that human element to it. A lot of us read these Reagan things. Who gets these in their mailbox all the time, right? They've got them for healthcare communication, speech writing. Uh, that really is curated content because they do produce original stuff, but they also go out on the web and find some cool stuff to publish for us. So that, you, you've never thought of it that way, but that's also an example of curation.